Hello, I'm Julian Ania from Trinity University, and I work with Nick Youngkins and Dr. Emma Treadway to explore the influence of movement frequency on stiffness discrimination. A common approach for quantifying human haptic perception has historically relied on measuring the just noticeable difference, or J&D, between two levels of a property. Weber's law predicts that J&D is proportional to the magnitude of the reference stiffness. Recently, Wei Fu and collaborators proposed a modified Weber's law that can explain masking effects between properties for single frequency interactions with spring mass damper systems. In this work, we sought to understand how stiffness JNDs predict that different frequencies might combine when multiple frequencies are excited by the user. Shown here is the frequency response function of a spring rendered through open loop impedance control. Fu's modified Weber's law can be used to predict a stiffness JND at any frequency. For example, in this case, the JND is smaller at 2 Hz than at half Hz, as shown by the blue lines. Different stiffnesses shift the frequency response function and alter the predicted JND at each frequency. An open question is how movements at combinations of frequencies might impact JND. Would the participant have a JND close to the better of the two JNDs, or would there be blending between the JNDs of the two frequencies? In this study, we explored the question for stiffness JND with a perceptual experiment based on the methods of adjustments. Participants were asked to move the handle of a 1D haptic device to track different signals at our four conditions two single sinusoids and two combinations of sinusoids with the majority 2 hertz or half hertz while simultaneously performing a stiffness matching task. They were able to see a simulated scope displaying the signal to track as well as their own movement. Participants could switch between the reference stiffness and the comparison stiffness, which they were instructed to adjust to match the reference stiffness in each trial using a fader type linear potentiometer while simultaneously tracking the presented signal. For each trial, a final comparison stiffness set by the participant was used to calculate the error from the reference stiffness, which would increase with increasing J and D. The errors for each participant are shown here, with each condition shown in a different color. The condition average across all three trials is connected by the solid lines. It can be seen that the single half hertz condition errors in red were significantly higher than the single two hertz errors in blue and the dual majority two hertz errors in green. Of course, participants do not always track perfectly. In order to account for the influence of these deviations, we ex examined the stiffness error in relation to the actual ratio that participants achieved between a half hertz and two hertz sinusoids throughout each trial. The absolute error is shown plotted against the ratio of movement signal power at half hertz to the combined power at half hertz and two hertz with each participant shown in a different color. A linear fit to each participant's data found a positive slope for all but one participant, suggesting that as more of the half hertz signals introduced into the movements, the identification error increased, meaning the introduction of a slow frequency made it more difficult for the participant to discern the virtual spring stiffness. Our results suggest that stiffness J and D during multi-frequency movement varies continuously, blending between the two single frequency thresholds.